Hi everyone, I'm Mina and welcome to my channel. If you're new, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe and turn on notifications. That really helps to support me. And let's get straight into this video. So if you're wondering where I am since this is a completely new setup, I'm actually in Seattle visiting my older sister for the entire summer. And yesterday we actually ended up going to the Amazon headquarters and we got to see the spheres, which is really cool. So I'm hoping to go back again and make a video about us kind of touring the Amazon spheres. So be on the lookout for that video. But this video is going to be a really long one because I'm going to be talking about all of my tips on how I apply to 20 colleges and just my general tips for in order to help all of you. If you know anything about the college process, it is very long, very hard, and incredibly tedious. And you definitely can't get through it without being super organized and things like that. And so I'm here with all of the tips that I learned while going through the process. And so hopefully this can help you guys. All right, so first of all, I am going to be giving you so much information and so many tips throughout this entire video, so make sure you stay tuned until the very end. Everything is really important, and I'm sure a lot of it will be very helpful to all of you. So getting into my first and most important tip ever, you definitely need to be organized and stay on top of everything and when i mean plan everything i literally mean plan everything and the tool that really helped me to do this is a p an application called trello and all my friends and family know how much i love trello i preach about it all the time but it is so useful and i highly highly recommend you to use it for this college application process so right here i have pulled up my college timeline and it's on my trello board so as you can see, I started right as my school ended from May 11th, and I recommend that you start as soon as possible because there really isn't enough time, especially if you're trying to apply to like some insane number of schools, like 20 schools. So what I did here is I created a timeline for my entire summer. I knew that when school started again in the fall for my senior year, I'd be ridiculously busy and I wouldn't have a lot of time to work on my college applications. So I wanted to get as much done as possible during the summer. And honestly, I got basically all of it done during the summer. As you can see, for example, week one, I focused on my Common App application. So Trello is really nice just because you can put a bunch of links and things like that into your different cards. So that's really helpful to have everything in one place. On week two, as you can see, I put a specific college that I would be focusing on for that week. So for example, I put Princeton, then MIT and Cornell, then Stanford, and I put all of the different essays or prompts that they had right there in, inside of Trello. And this was really helpful because I would then be able to really easily brainstorm ideas for what I wanted my essays to be about. So I just put all of the ideas that I had right into the description right there. So that was super helpful and I highly recommend doing that. And you can also put custom fields where you can put the different word limits for, the, for each of the essays. So that's really helpful because you can super easily just glance at your Trello board and then see that. So going further, you can see that week four, starting from week four, I have a card for an internship. So I was working full time during 10 weeks of the summer, and I knew that obviously I wouldn't have as much time during those 10 weeks as I would otherwise. So I kind of planned that accordingly. So if we continue on, I then started an English class that I took over the summer. It was supposed to be study abroad, but it got canceled due to COVID. So I had to do my English class. So obviously you can see I didn't have that much to do those two weeks because I knew that I would be super super, super busy and I just wouldn't have time for it. And another tip that I have is work on the schools with a lot of essays and stuff at the beginning when you're not feeling burnt out, because believe me, you will definitely feel burnt out after doing a couple of these. So you'll be really tired. And at the end, as you can see, I didn't have that much that I needed to do because I planned it out that way since I knew that I would be super burnt out. So I just had to do my UK and Northeastern application, just kind of finish out map as well as, you know, adding a couple of other things. 
So then at the end, I have these last three cards. I was also submitting an art portfolio to as many schools as I could. So that's what I have here. And what's nice about Trello is you can actually put due dates in, as you can see right there, the, the due date's November 1st, and you can set it so that it actually reminds you on your phone when these due dates are. So if you aren't really keeping track of it as much as you should, and all of a sudden, you know, it's due the next day and you totally forgot about it or something, it will remind you through the Trello app on your mobile phone, and that can really help you to keep track of things. And you can see I also put all my college application deadlines. If you take anything away from this video is that you need to be super super organized and that Trello is the tool that you need to use for it because it was so so helpful. So for my second tip, this is kind of a heavily debated topic, but it's the number of schools that you actually apply to. So I personally believe that you should apply to as many schools as you possibly can. And of course there's financial barriers and things like that. So this number is going to be different for everyone. But for me personally, I was initially trying to apply to only 13 schools. And I would say that the probably the average number of schools people apply to is anywhere from like eight to 15 or something like that. So I was pretty comfortable with 13 and I didn't think that I wanted to go above that. But after doing research into how the college application process was going to be affected due to COVID this year, you know, with them removing standardized testing and all of the different applicants from a couple from last year, there was gonna be a lot more applicants and a lot less spots for them to fill. And so I, I knew that this would probably really affect my chances of getting into a lot of schools and and so that's the reason why I applied to 20 schools in the end. Even if it wasn't for COVID though, I think I would have applied to a lot more than 13 schools, maybe not as many as 20, but you definitely just never know. You know, I, I, I applied to seven out of the eight IVs. I sent the exact same application to all seven and I only got accepted into one of them. And you just never know what's gonna happen because so much of your acceptance is left up to chance and is left up to a bunch of different factors that you have absolutely no control over. Probability wise, if you apply to a lot more schools, you have a higher chance of getting in somewhere. But with that being said, you shouldn't just apply to schools randomly just because you know you want to see if you can get in or you should definitely only apply to somewhere that you truly see yourself being happy there because worst case scenario, you're going to get rejected from all other schools except for this one school. So you need to really think about if you're gonna be happy if in that situation going to that one school. You don't wanna waste money applying somewhere if you decide that you're not gonna be happy if you end up having to choose that school. So definitely keep that in mind. So going into my third tip, you definitely want to check out financial aid calculators for all of the schools that you're trying to apply to. So first of all, if you haven't talked to your parents about how much they're willing to pay for your school or how much they can afford, you definitely need to have that conversation as soon as possible. That's a really huge factor in your college decision that, I don't know, for some reason, some people just don't talk to their parents about. And so you definitely want to do that. But going back into the financial aid calculators, I did that for all of my schools. And for example, I knew that Georgia Tech and the University of Michigan would be really expensive unless I got some sort of scholarship. So I sent them my applications because I did like the schools and I did ex end up getting accepted into both schools, but both of them were way too expensive because I didn't end up getting the smart scholarship that I was hoping for. So those were almost immediately crossed off of my list of possible college choices. But with that being said, there are so many scholarship opportunities that you can both apply for and are kind of automatic in the process of after you submit your common application. So you definitely need to keep those in mind. Going into my fourth tip, you definitely need to brainstorm a lot for your essay ideas. And I would definitely recommend talking to maybe your family about some ideas that you're having. That's what I did. I talked to everyone in my family and a lot of the times your parents or whatever remember funny stories that happen or memorable stories that you completely forgot about that would make really great essay topics. So you definitely want to talk to other people and get their perspectives on your essays.
You also want to find someone who can look over your essays, whether that's a guidance counselor or your parents or whatever. It's so helpful to have someone else's opinions and their perspectives on your essays. A lot of the times they can give you a lot of constructive feedback that will really make your essays stand out from everyone else's. Another important thing relating to essays is that if, a, if the college you're applying to haven't yet released their essay prompts, you definitely want to go ahead and write essays from the previous years just because they hardly ever change. I think they change like once every five years or something like that. So most of the time, the school that you're applying to won't change their essays and you can already knock those out of the park so you don't have to worry about them later. And worst case scenario, even if they do change, you already wrote some great essay that you can probably copy and paste into a lot of your other school's essays or somehow rephrase into fitting with that year's prompts. And another really important tip when it comes to essays is don't try to come up with some grand story. You really wanna be true to yourself. And I actually attended a Columbia University's info session a couple of years ago. And one of the people there was saying that they were reading some story about some kid who wants to pursue pre-med. And he was talking about how he was like walking to school one day and he almost got hit by a car. And all of a sudden he realized that he wanted to become a doctor to help people who get into accidents. And although that's a perfectly fine story, it doesn't tell the reader a lot about yourself. So instead, what the Com Columbia Info Session person said was she was saying that uh, one of the best essays she's ever read what came from this kid who talked about guacamole and <laughs> that's super random but basically I guess he was known in his family and friend group was that he made really good guacamole so his essay ideal was that he would talk about the different aspects that go into guacamole so like the avocado the jalapenos or whatever and talk about how those different ingredients relate to an aspect of his personality or something relating to his character so this isn't some grand story or anything like that, but it's definitely memorable and it leaves an impact on the reader and it's different from everyone else. You don't want to try to come up with some grand story that isn't being true to yourself because that's not what the college read application readers want to see at all. So going into my fifth tip, you I guess this is somewhat obvious, but you definitely want to ask your letter of rec writers early if they can write your letter of rec. You know, especially if you're at a smaller school or a specific number of teachers are really popular at your school to be asked. You want to be proactive and show them that you're really organized and you're th just the fact that you're on top of things. So I'd recommend asking your summer before your senior year or, you know, as early as you possibly can. Your letter of rec writers have a lot on their plate as well. You want to be respectful of their time and give them plenty of time to write your letter of recommendation. I had a couple of friends who their letter writers didn't have enough time to write their letter. It was super stressful. It was a, a week before applications were due and you don't want to be put into that sort of situation when you can really easily avoid it by asking your letter writers early. You want to be cordial and just super respectful of the time, so make sure you keep that in mind. Also, even if you've had a teacher in class and so they know a lot about who you are and your personality, you still want to give them as much information about yourself as possible. So what I did was I gave my letter writers my resume, a list of all my accomplishments, and just anything else that, that could, they could possibly use to write in their letter of recommendation. You just want to make it as easy as possible for them to write a really great letter for you. Going into my next tip, if you're a little bit younger, maybe you're just starting high school or something like that, you definitely want to keep track and keep a list of all of the accomplishments or extracurriculars or, or awards that you've received because that's going to make it so much easier for your senior year without you having to go back into all of your you know, certifications or whatever in order to find out what you want to put into your common application. This also kind of goes with that in that you don't have a lot of space in your common app to put information. So for example, you have five academic and five non-academic awards that you can put, but you only have a hundred characters or something like that for the description. You put years and years and years of work into this. For example, First Robotics, I spent 12 years in the program, and then you only have 100 characters that you can actually write about all of the things that you've done. That's not a lot of space. So you want to make sure you're conservative about your character count, keep the character count in mind, 
and make sure that you're organized with all of your awards and extracurriculars and stuff like that. So for my last tip that I want to leave with you guys is try not to have a dream school and you're not you're probably not going to hear that anywhere else but I strongly strongly believe that you should not go into the college application process having a dream school and that's really really important. So of course it's okay to have a goal that you're trying to reach and everything and you know you're working really hard to get towards that goal but first of all there are so many amazing colleges not only in the united states but also internationally how can you possibly have this one sole school that you really really want to go to above all the other colleges it just doesn't make sense because there are so many amazing opportunities out there if you have an open mind and you're willing to look at them you don't want to get too attached to a school because if you don't get in then you're going to be super Super crushed and you really just don't want to go through that emotionally when it's not worth it and when there's so many other schools that are amazing opportunities as well. You want to go into the college application process with an open mind because for me personally my top three choices of Caltech, Columbia, and Rice and if you haven't checked out my video comparing those three colleges definitely check that out I'll put it in the description box below. But for Caltech, I never in a million years thought I'd even get accepted there because it's known to be the hardest school in the United States to get accepted to. So I, that wasn't really on my radar at all because I didn't think I could get in. And then for Columbia, of course it's an Ivy League school, so I wasn't confident at all that I would get accepted there. And then for Rice, that was actually a last minute ad for me because I felt so strongly that I didn't want to go anywhere south of Kentucky, which is where I live, because I really hate hot weather. So I was looking at schools at the Northeast and I Rice honestly wasn't on my radar at all until about a year ago and I ended up committing there and you can actually see I'm wearing my Rice shirt right now but after researching it so much I loved it. My point is is that you never know what's going to happen and you need to go into the process with an open mind. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly, truly hope that it was at least a little bit helpful for you guys who are incoming seniors going into the college process now, or even if you're younger and starting to research the college application process. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a thumbs up as well as a comment down in the comment section below. And see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.